All right, YouTube, it is a beautiful Sunday morning in the middle of pandemic 2020. I've got my rainbow farting unicorn cup full of uh, Food Forest Farms coffee this morning. Absolutely delicious. And we're going to talk about the new hydro system <coughs> going into my greenhouse, which you can see right now. Look at that. Look how clear that greenhouse plastic is. Isn't that the most amazing? Ah! Nope, see, plastic's gone. Uh, we're going to be redoing that. I don't need it in the summer, and I don't need to sweat, so it's gone for now. I originally planned on doing eight buckets back here, but as I started looking at it and thinking about one of my problems with the old aquaponics system in here was space uh, and the ability to work on things. And I would rather have one less plant and more ability to work on things. So we're going to have plumbing coming in from right here. And we might be doing some things up the side walls, across or vertical, I'm not sure, on both wings. So having that working space there is totally worth giving up a plant. I mean, seven, seven tomatoes just in this system is going to be plenty uh, more than I need. Plus, we'll have, we're going to be doing, we're probably going to do a crack key system similar to this in that space in there at some point. Just to kind of co compare the two with a float valve that just keeps the, uh, the level from dropping below a certain level. What we're going to do here, this is going to be a deep water recirculating system. Um, I really like these commander buckets. People are like, you know, you can get buckets for $2 that are food. But I don't care. I don't care. Uh, these are, first of all, they're flat. That means that you can install a bulkhead, and it doesn't leak. See that? These bulkheads are inexpensive, and um, I was going to use uniseals, or I was going to use basically threaded... Uh, slip and thread adapters or what have you. And I just decided as cheap as I could get those bulkheads for, go ahead and use the bulkheads. I ended up getting them for like two bucks a piece at a plumbing uh, website. Uh, they're all half inch and they're slip out of eliminated using a fitting, a slip and thread fitting. You'd have to screw in. They're slip on both sides. So if I need to do anything internally with them, I can do that kind of standardized on them for these things. But I'm using a one inch return line. So you can see you're coming out a half inch out of each bucket. Then you're going to one inch. And this is because I said a long time ago, no one ever said, gee, I wish my return lines were smaller. Um, you know, hopefully that'll be enough. It should be plenty for the way I'm going to run this. This is, like I said, going to be have a crack key element in a deep water recirculating uh, system. And it's a really simple way that I did that. If you look right here, you'll see this valve apparatus. So right now that valve is open. So these are all absolutely level, right? I, I leveled these beams when I installed this shelf for these buckets to sit on, that put all the buckets level. That means that if you have a return line, the water's gonna sit the same in all the buckets. Water always finds level, it has to. That's just how water works, that's how gravity works. So right now with this valve open, if I were to be running this system, if it were full, it's gonna go to about right there is where it's gonna maintain a level. So that puts your water level like way down there in the bucket, right about there. That's a pretty big air gap, cracky. However, all I gotta do is close that valve and now this becomes your return level and your water level ends up about right there. So what we're gonna do, we'll start the plants at a four inch or three inch net pot, I ain't decided yet. Uh, and we'll have that water level up to there so that the roots are getting water. Once the roots get down, all we have to do is throw this valve. We might wanna like cut off the resupply of the, the sump that I'll talk about in a second for a couple of days so that we don't flood out the sump because that's a lot of water coming across seven buckets, say, Probably two gallons a piece, so 14 gallons. So we're going to make sure there's 14 gallons of headspace in the sump. Once we've done that, all we got to do is open that valve. Our water magically drops. All those beautiful hair roots can form up in the air gap like cracky. We still have recirculating. This will not be a constant recirculation. It will be same thing that I've done uh, for my indoor vertical farm. 15 minutes out of every hour. So it's only six hours of runtime for the pump a day. Pump lasts longer, costs less to run. Simple $9 timer, push down some pegs, and that happens. And it doesn't matter if it gets shut off. It's still going to be on a 15-45 cycle. So we'll have that. Next up, um, we have a hole right there, which is why I decided to locate the sump here. You might be wondering, why this fool locate this sump jutting out like this? I thought about turning it sideways up underneath that shelf, and every time I have to work on it, it's a problem. Every time I have to work on it, it's a problem. I don't like problems. I like to be able to get my hands on stuff and work on it. And it ended up, it just made sense to put it there, and it's not going to be in the way of anything else I'm going to do, and it's easy to work on. But what I'll do is I'll pop a bulkhead in the sidewall of it over here, and then coming back here, I'll take some of these cinder blocks. I'll make a little platform back here where there's no sun hitting it at all because this is the back side. This is the north side of the greenhouse. 
and I'll have a garbage can, a 32 gallon tough garbage can sitting here and a pipe going in that hole right there. I'll fill that hole in so it's all nice and pookied or whatever. And then all I gotta do is add affluent out here. Of course, I'll have a valve and a union where that can be disconnected and go away if it needs to for the winter, but at least we can shut it off and drain it for the winter. And then we just have to be more mindful during the winter of adding affluent inside. Again, that's why that sump is where I can get to it. But all through fall through spring, or spring through fall, I should say, we'll be able to run that external tank. And when I need to add nutrient, all I have to do is come back here, add the appropriate amount of water, add the appropriate amount of nutrient, stick my mortar mixer in, boom. I might throw a pump in here that just kind of is turned on an angle that circulates it and run that 30 minutes twice a day just to keep the... Uh, the affluent mixed, really simple automation. I can do that for 20, 30 bucks. I don't need a big pump to do that. I'm not sure if I'll do that or not yet. We'll see. I always try to not do things and see what needs to be done down the road. So that's where we're at now. Now here's kind of the magic. What's gonna happen next, we will run plumbing for the supply line. Cause right now water can get home, but it can't get out, right? So we're gonna have to run water to each bucket. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take hedge sprinklers. Those are the little round ones. They sell for about you know 55 cents. They screw onto a slip and thread fitting and that goes onto a piece of half inch. I got a bunch of those sitting around. I'm gonna take and run my half inch pipe along here, running you know T's and coming into each bucket with a piece of half inch delivery. Inside the bucket, you know, maybe that far down, we'll have that hedge sprinkler. And whenever that pump kicks on, instead of just delivering water, it will spray into the bucket. So basically what we're doing now, we're, we're going to combine three different hydroponic elements. We're going to have deep water recirculating that once the roots get deep enough, will go down to cracky. And that means I can probably, once the roots start to grow at all, go ahead and drop that water level. Because every 15 minutes, every hour, for 15 minutes... You're going to have that, that affluent spraying through those head sprinklers. What do we have now? We have a form of aeroponics. But then we have the deep water recirculating in the air gap. So now we have Kratky. We have deep water recirculating. We have aeroponics elements all being combined into one very, very simple system. Very inexpensive. 100% off the shelf. So that's this system. Now what I'm going to do to expand it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build it. I'm going to get it running. I'm going to see based on the size pump that I have, how well it runs seven buckets. If there's enough pressure left to do more things, I've got that wall there that I can expand out to. I have some ideas and I've got this wall here. I'm not as excited about expanding out onto this wall. And the reason I'm not as excited about expanding onto this wall is this is gonna be where all of my plugs and everything are and that's my access point. But I got that great big tall vertical space right there. So what we might do is some sort of a vertical tower uh, that, that pipes into the return or has its own return line. That would be really super simple. But it seems here we could do another two buckets and maybe do some peppers or cucumbers or something there. So that's going to be that system. We'll see how much bigger it gets. There's always the possibilities of some other things we could do depending on how much throw that pump has. There's a lot of space here to work with. But about face here... What we're going to do here is a second system on its own pump with its own sump. And the reason we're going to do that is it will have different fertility requirements than tomatoes. This is going to run Texas tomato food at a pretty high concentration. We're going to grow fennel, maybe some leaf crops, and strawberries here. So the initial system I'm going to build, that's a piece of 3-inch, but just pretend it's 4-inch. We're going to do 4-inch pipe, plumbing strap attached to these walls at least three pipes. I'm going to see what that looks like. Maybe we'll go to four. And it's just going to be a simple recirculating system uh, where water will go into the first pipe, flow through. There'll be an overflow stack to the second pipe, an overflow stack on the other side to the third pipe. And then the water has to force to come across down to a sump. And I could probably run a simple 17 gallon sump like is in my indoor vertical farm in there. There, uh, I don't know exactly what spacing yet, but I'm thinking 10 to 12 plants per pipe. So that'll give me 30 to 36 plants here. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do like, I don't know, strawberries up high because they won't need much growth space. And then two pipes down below and I'll see what the spacing looks like. And maybe we could, we could put a fourth pipe in because your first pipe can be about right here. And the reason it can be about right here is the pipe itself doesn't need to get sun, only what comes out of it. So we can go all the way down here with our first pipe. 
and we still have plenty of room to put a sump down here. Uh, last thing is, you see that big hole? That's because we have those IBCs and we we're trying to go as low as possible. Once this is all done, uh, I'll come in. I have tons of extra fill around here, and I'm going to fill that in up to those um, cinders, that we, half cinders that we have this whole structure sitting on. So that will all fill back in. It'll be a lot more comfortable to work back there. But that's... Uh, that's where we're at with this. I did a video last week and I said I wasn't messing around that we were going to absolutely be getting on this even in the middle of a pandemic and I wasn't kidding. I would have probably got the supply line plumbed in yesterday, but let me show you what we did. Um, go through my shop here. It is a wreck. It will be a wreck for another month at least. This was all supposed to get redone this winter and with everything that went on, it didn't, but we're on track now. Vertical farm is going. It's running through a cycle. All this, see up top, those are all starts plants that will be going out soon. But my wife has heard me say I'm going to make these pretty for her for like a year and a half. And I got all this work going on, and I had stuff coming from uh, Lowe's being delivered. And I thought, well, right now, dummy, whatever you need, you should order all of it in one delivery, even if it costs more money, because you pay the delivery fee is 50 bucks no matter how much you order. So one of the guys at my fall workshop said, hey, you know, those fence pickets are really cheap. And if you cut them in half, you can use two. Um, you know, you, cut, you get two out of one, basically, at 36 inches. So I did this yesterday with my grandson. And the reason I broke off the plumbing to do this, this was something he could help with. I got some videos of him on Instagram. Uh, running a, a nail gun and you know, it was just carrying some really light wood versus big two by fours and stuff like that So I already had the frame built <clears throat> So we just went ahead and uh, cut the uh, slats and We just you know I'd, every other one I had a dog ear because when you cut one in half you get a flat So dog ears are pretty easy to cut if you can't cut a dog ear. I don't know that you can uh, I guess for those who don't know a dog ear is this little Thing here on top of the fence. Anyway, it's all pretty now I got three more of those to build and I got enough of those tanks. I'm probably, you see that pipe sticking up right there? That's for expansion. I'm probably going to put two more of these in. My wife and I talked about them and what we thought about doing instead of coming straight out, we got this little crate myrtle here we're rehabbing, is coming the same distance between them, but then coming in so that the left wall of this one matches the right wall of that one for symmetry. So we'll have two kind of sitting here surrounding this Antonovka apple and that pond system back there that runs them all. These are wicking beds for those that aren't uh, familiar with wicking beds or were asking about my wicking beds. These are actually flow through. So that stand up right there sets the level of the water and that delivers and it all returns to that pond. All four of these do that. These are recirculating versus static wicking beds. Anyway, guys, we got a lot going on. Place is blowing up green. People are asking about the fruit trees. They're happy. They're beautiful. They have almost no fruit on them. Uh, we had a very mild winter. Everything budded out and blossomed out really, really early. And then we got a big deep freeze down in the low 20s, and it just screwed us again. Uh, there are some apples with blossoms on them right now. There's one there. There's some plums that set. I think I'm going to have a goji berry harvest like I ain't never seen before this year. These gojis just exploded. This is their third year. They started out as little twigs. There was two of them about as big as that tip right there. And they kind of did okay for a couple years, but this year they are blowing. That's all the way up in that apple back there. So I think we'll have a big goji harvest, but uh, mostly we're going to be living on annuals this year. We'll catch you guys later.